Welcome to the graduation of Leadership Fort Lauderdale, Class 26. Thank you to these sponsors for their generous support of Leadership Fort Lauderdale and the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce. We're all sailing across the sea of life, and as such, we're bound to battle through some powerful storms. But that's to be expected because we were never promised smooth sailing, right? Of course not. But we were promised if we remain positive and don't give up, we'll eventually reach the other side. This recent storm is big, no doubt. It struck with a heavy hand like a bolt of lightning out of a clear night sky. It's created much chaos. But what do we learn in the chaos? What do we do to survive the storm? To be better prepared for the coming storms? You see, chaos is a normal part of life. Struggle is an essential part of growth and development. A mighty oak tree begins with a little seed that is planted in the ground, and it fights its way up into the light, only to be faced with screaming winds, heavy rain, freezing snow, burning sun, and endless adversity year after year to become a beautiful and strong oak tree. Because it's only in the storms that we can grow. It's only when we're truly tested that you really know how tough you are. It's only when you're tested that your character can develop. The storms develop your confidence. And as your confidence grows, so does your capacity. With each wave, you gain strength and confidence for the next storm. If you're fighting a good fight right now, just tell yourself it's been specifically designed that way to develop your strength and confidence for the next level of excellence, the next level of leadership. So when the next storm comes, you'll have more confidence because of the past victory. And when you win that one, you'll have more confidence for the next. That's why the elderly are wise. They've been through more storms. So approach the storms with the growth mindset. Appreciate the storms, respect the storms, and defeat the storms. If we do this as a community, we'll be unstoppable. No challenge will be too great. No problem will be too big. Resistance makes us stronger. The resistance of air is needed for a plane to fly. The resistance of water is needed for a boat to float. The resistance of gravity is needed for us to walk. Resistance is meant to develop us. Let's embrace it. Let us all be proud graduates of the University of Adversity. Afraid of no obstacle that's placed before us. Every opportunity has difficulty and every difficulty has opportunity. Let's focus on the opportunities in our difficulties. Once the storm is over, you won't remember how you made it through, how you managed to survive. You won't even be sure whether or not the storm is really over. But one thing is certain, when you come out the other side, you won't be the same as when you went in. You will be smarter, faster, tougher, stronger, braver. The storms aren't made to break us, they're made to make us. The greatest sailors, companies, people are the ones that have been through the worst of storms and not given up. The fog was thick, the waves were strong, the temperatures were freezing, but they never gave up. They kept moving forward. They kept rowing the boat. They kept adjusting their sails. And the stronger the storm would become, the stronger their will to overcome. You see, one or the other will eventually break. You or the storm. And as long as you don't give up, lose your focus or lose your will to win, the storm will eventually break first. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And on behalf of the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce and Leadership Fort Lauderdale, I would like to welcome you to the graduation of Class 26 via Zoom. My name is Carolyn Michaels, Executive Vice President for the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce and Program Director of Leadership Fort Lauderdale. It's hard to believe that we have just celebrated our 26th year of leadership training and amid these past few months, many lessons have been learned. 
We don't know what tomorrow will bring, but we'll continue to lift each other up by taking advantage of the opportunity to make each day special. Celebrate life to the fullest and accept the challenges brought forth. We are more than prepared. I want to acknowledge my assistant, Dolores Molina, and to thank you, Dolores, for all that you do. And to Dan Lindblade, Mike Cabela, and the Chamber staff for your continued support and encouragement. Thank you all. It also gives me great pleasure to give special acknowledgement to the numerous committee members, sponsors, speakers, and facilitators who gave so willingly of their time. Without their support and assistance, this program would not be the success it is today. And to the employers of our graduates for their support and encouragement in providing their staff the opportunity to participate. The class has wrapped up a 10-month commitment, bringing it all together and continuing their journey. Throughout the year, you have strengthened your effectiveness and your business organization in the community by participating in the program days, meeting with community leaders throughout the year, and expanding on your communication skills. You have continued to volunteer your personal time and to assist with making the lives of others more meaningful and enjoyable. But most of all, you have expanded your knowledge of community issues and have strengthened your involvement in community affairs. The Chamber's leadership program is committed to developing the city's future and current leaders by increasing their awareness of business issues and challenges facing our community. And we have certainly seen the challenges, specifically these past few months. And I know each graduate is up to the task and have far surpassed that goal. We will meet these outstanding individuals shortly and I applaud and congratulate each and every one of you for your dedication and commitment in completing the program. The program does not stop here at graduation, it just begins. Graduates going back to class one are still actively involved and we, the chamber, depend on that continued support and commitment to continue to grow our chamber and our leadership within the organization. Leaders who jump in to help oversee issues relevant to our entire community. Continuing along that line, each year we challenge the class to select a project to oversee the needs of that particular organization. And this year, Partnership for the Homeless, an organization that assists individuals and families in need, was selected. Hours of work went into the planning of this project, but due to the coronavirus, the class had to postpone their plans, but when it is safe to do so, will fulfill their commitment, and you will hear more from our class chairs. Thanks, Carolyn, and to the graduates of Leadership Fort Lauderdale, Class 26. In the disruption of the COVID-19 pandemic, much of our lives in the world has either screeched to a stop or been turned upside down. This challenge has emphasized that athletes and movie stars are not heroes, but rather it is our frontline healthcare workers and first responders who approach each day with humility and commitment. So before I begin, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to all of you in our class who work day in and day out to keep us safe and keep us healthy. At the same time, our community is having conversations far too long overdue about systemic racial injustice and inequities. As leaders, we must be present for these conversations. While there are experiences that I understand that I've been privileged to never know personally, I know I must be there for the conversation to listen and learn. It is unquestionably true that only when everyone takes their place around the table with openness and a common goal can we actually work towards a solution. You know, it's hard to believe, but it was only a year ago when Carolyn and Dolores asked me to serve as chair. I was humbled but hesitant knowing that my travel schedule for work would be prohibitive in my ability to be physically present at many of the days. Carolyn and Dolores both assured me that the team in place would ensure success. Without a doubt, this class has been such a positive experience because of my co-chair, Jeremy Son, our outstanding program committees, Dolores, and of course, our kooky Canadian, Carolyn. Jeremy, I can't say enough about you. 
You overcame great health challenges and provided true leadership for our program. So Jeremy, sincerely, thank you. And on behalf of the Chamber, I wanted to present you the, this recognition, of course, in our uniquely socially distant manner. Okay. On that same level, our program day committee members stepped up to the plate and knocked it out of the park. Whether it was last minute cancellations from sites, securing relevant panelists, or adopting to a virtual platform during COVID, our committee members are the true drivers of these successful programs. I encourage each and every one of you to get involved in one or two for the next class to share your feedback and set the tone for each day. With the COVID challenge, our healthcare workers and first responders have shown us that we can get through the brick wall of COVID-19. But it is important to remember that on the other side of that wall, there are new challenges, yes, but there are also unlimited possibilities. You'll see on the note with your t-shirt a quote from someone who has inspired me for over a decade despite no longer being with us. Randy Pausch in his true last lecture talked about really achieving our childhood dreams. There was great beauty in looking at things through the eyes of a child. Hope and optimism reign over preconceived notions and being jaded. This mindset must guide us through challenges we currently face and those yet to come. Broward County has been my home for 25 years. I'm now fortunate to work in and around the systems I grew up in. But my favorite thing to do is to get to know people like all of you who are working every day to better yourself and to better our community. My challenge to you as leaders of our community is to not settle for a return to normal. Think about, plan, and execute your innovative ideas to make your workplace, and more importantly, your community, a better place for all. So congratulations to all of you, LFL Class 26, and thank you for each, everything each and every one of you do every day. I know we always say Leadership Fort Lauderdale, Class 26, best class ever. Whether that's opinion or fact, one thing that we can all agree on is no one will ever experience a class like this, ever. We started out with a bang and a boat. Who remembers their Australian handshake? That ropes course really showed the creatives and the competitors in the group. The ones driven to overcome challenges and the ones who would cheer everyone on from the ground as they climbed higher. It laid the foundation for the rest of the 10 months ahead. As program days began, the true experience started. There was the bus, breakfast, the surveys, and we quickly learned from all that what to expect and what to plan for. We had fun celebrating birthdays, promotions, engagements, and even fifth dates. Admittedly, we never really nailed the formula for happy hours. Though, I would challenge anyone that this class earned the title of most happy hours planned considering we had a monthly happy hour between program days and if that wasn't enough, we decided to have happy hours on program days. The one thing that we did well is that we didn't leave it in the classroom. We shared experiences. We cherished moments. We spent time with our classmates from awards to fundraisers and even holiday parties. Not sure if this was unique to our class, but the addition of two new classmates, John and David, halfway through, facilitated the intro to our class vice chair, who was quickly welcomed and immersed into our experience. Then it was time to decide on the class project, and that was interesting, if for no other reason than there was chicken feet present. It was fun to see classmates present, discuss, and vote on what ended up being our final project, and simultaneously, for John, Loma, LJ, Wes, Amy, Brian, Mike, and me to receive the honor of becoming your class leaders. And then there was COVID-19, a one-of-a-kind experience. And I wanna congratulate Carolyn, Mike, and Dolores for adapting our program days and graduation, for being able to continue executing program days and planning a virtual graduation experience. That shows real adaptability. 
Though our class ended much differently to any other before it, or ever again, the relationships we've built, the experiences we've shared, and the knowledge we gained will be marked on us forever as we continue with the rest of our lives, as intended. Even though we haven't had the opportunity to complete a class project and leave our legacy, I truly believe that the Chamber and all of Fort Lauderdale will remember Leadership Fort Lauderdale, Class 26. Thank you for giving me the honor of being your classmate and serving you these past 11 months. I look forward to the years ahead of us deepening these relationships, helping each other overcome challenges, and cheering everyone on as you get to the top of your climb. Now I have the pleasure of introducing our Class Vice Chair, John Augie, to share some remarks. Thank you, Ty. Good evening, Leadership Fort Lauderdale, Class 26. First, I would like to address the elephant in the room. Many of you are likely thinking to yourself, who the heck is this guy? And rightfully so, but my name is John Augie, and I was selected as our Class Vice Chair. My journey through this program was quite different. One day I was attending a chamber board meeting, and the next thing I knew, I was being introduced as your newest member to the class. I knew joining almost halfway through would put me in catch-up mode, but after many introductions to my new classmates and observing everyone, there is one thing very clear to me. This class was very unique, and I knew I was going to be a part, be a part of something very special. We were all enjoying the ride that would bring us to see how Fort Lauderdale leaders were sculpted, what made people tick, how success was earned and not given, how everyone's story is different, and then once we were hitting on all cylinders and preparing to make our mark as a class, we were presented with a global crisis where we were forced to put our leadership skills to immediate use. Everyone has been affected in some capacity during these last couple months, but I know one thing, this class is doing everything possible to make a difference, and that should make us all feel very proud. I wanna give a big thank you to Caroline, Dolores, and our class chair, Ty for their leadership and for making this a very special and successful experience. Although tonight is to celebrate our wonderful accomplishments as a class, I would like to challenge all of us not to view today as the ending to our uniquely traveled book, but the beginning to our wonderful achievements and impacts this Fort Lauderdale Leadership Class 26 will leave in our local communities through our teamwork and hard work. May God bless all of you and your families with health, happiness, and much success in the future. Thank you. <laughs>